Shalom, Shalom, Israel's brothers, Ariella. Coming back at you with another cold cut. I'd like to give our praises to Yahweh, Ba'ashim, Yahweh Shai. All right, double honors to the men out there on the highways and byways, pushing the truth and honesty and sincerity. The mighty Aqua guiding their households in these last days, raising up their children, and the mighty children abiding in their parents' households as well. Shalom, Shalom. Coming back with another cold cut for today, man, going into mercy. Showing mercy to your brothers, showing mercy to your sister. The both sides shows mercy as well to all of our brothers and sisters, man. You know, let me get, kick it off with this and go to the book of Colossians. Both sides shows mercy. We got to show mercy. We ain't better than our brother. We ain't better than the Lord. You know, this Colossians chapter 3. And I'll start at verse 12. It says, put on, therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, vows of mercies, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long suffering, forbearing one another and forgiving one another. If, if any have a quarrel against any, even as Amashiach forgave you, also do ye. So the Lord forgave us of our sins, forgave, forgave, forgave us of our trespass, even though we all deserve to die. We all deserve to perish. We're not better than the Lord. So we got to show mercy to our brothers. We got to show mercy to our sisters. And this is what the elect is going to master. If you're part of the elect, you're going to master mercy. Right, let me get another precept. All right. Watching out for your brother. You're watching out for your sister, man. You have to show mercy in these last days. If you don't show mercy, the Lord will kick you, man. All right. Go to the book of Matthew. And that means forgiving as well. All right. This book of Matthew. Chapter 6. And I start at verse 14. For if you forgive men of their trespasses, your heavenly father will also forgive you. So if you forgive men of what they have done to you, you forgive men of their trespasses towards you. Um, if they had a fault, if y'all had a disagreement, and you forgive your brother, what, the Lord will forgive you. The Lord will forgive you of your sins. The Lord will forgive you of your iniquities. But if you forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your father forgive you. So like neither will your father forgive your trespasses. And that's that's plain. The most high never forgive you what you have done. If you haven't forgiven your brother what you have done. What you got? Kanye, like the brother saying, we want to have that spirit of mercy and forgiveness. Because there's countless of times where you offended the Lord in this truth, yet you're still in the truth. And that's the Lord's mercy towards you. So how much more... Should you have that same spirit upon your own people? It's the book of um, Matthew chapter 18 and verse number 21. It reads, Then came Peter to him and said, Lord, how oft shall my brother sin against me? And that, and that, and that may be a sincere question that you ask yourself. All right, how many times should I let this brother go off and sin against me, offend me, uh, make fun of me, A, B, and C, and I constantly got to correct them, come to them, talk to them, etc. So Peter is asking the Lord this. It says, Till seven times, Yahweh Shai said unto him, I say not unto thee until seven times, but until seventy times seven. And that's and the, the number seven, as brothers and sisters know, is a number of completion, that number of spiritual. So Yahweh Shai was teaching. If your brother offends you constantly, forgive that man 70 times 7. Meaning always forgive him. Right? And again, that shows that spirit of mercy. Let's go to, to, uh, to the classic. Galatians chapter 5 verse 22. <clears throat> Galatians chapter 5 verse 22. It says, but, this, but the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, temperance. Against such there is no law. And again, you want to have that spirit of long suffering. I believe we, I believe we uh, touched on that. Having the spirit of long suffering, right? Peace, joy, and temperance. Right? You want to have that spirit of being temperate as well, not just uh, not being quick to go off on somebody. First of all, you got to sit back, examine the matter. Okay, the brother he offended you. All right, now just have mercy on the brother. You had, uh, you had Stephen in the book of Acts, the seventh chapter. Let me get this quick precept. Acts chapter seven. In verse number, I'm going to start at verse 55. It says, But he said, Being full of the Holy Ghost, look up steadfastly in heaven and saw the <clears throat> and saw the glory of God 
and Yahweh Shai standing on the right hand of God. So at this time you had men coming to stone Stephen, because Stephen was so on fire doing the work. It says, and said, Behold, I see the heavens open, and the Son of Man standing on the right hand of God. And they cried out with a loud voice, and stopped their ears, and ran upon them with one accord, and cast them out of the city, and stoned him. And the witnesses laid down their clothes at the young man's feet, whose name was Saul. Verse 59, it says, and they stoned Stephen, calling upon God, saying, Lord, Yahweh shall receive my spirit. And he kneeled down and cried with a loud voice. Lord, lay not this sin upon their charges. So as, as Stephen is, uh, is getting stoned for doing the work of the Lord, the righteous, right? He's in, the, he's in the right, of course. He's doing the work. A, B, and C. You had a group of men that was filled up with so much hatred. They wanted to stone Stephen. And they did stone him. They killed them unjustly. And again, as all this is going on, his mindset was to what? Let me read verse 60 again. It says, he kneeled down and cried with a loud voice, Lord, lay not this sin to their charge. He, his last words that he prayed was to not lay this sin on their charge. And again, that's having an abundance of, that's real love for your people. They, they, they stone you, they beat your ass every day, and you still praying for them. Still fasting for them, and they don't even know it. And to the point where they're literally in the midst of putting you to death, beating you and stoning you to death, you say, don't lay this charge upon, upon them. It says, and when he had said this, he fell asleep, meaning he gave up the ghost. And that's, and that's, Stephen was on a, 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 for a man to do this, he has to be on a whole another spiritual level. You getting stoned to death, rock cracking your skull open. And the men back then, the ancient world, they weren't weak men. These were men that had strength. That he throwing a rock, your bones breaking. And his last words was praying that the Lord have mercy on these men. And that's how we should be on our people. We should strive to have the spirit of Stephen and the mercy and uh and the mercy and the spirit that he had on five people. Because the Lord has that on us every day. What you got? That's right. That's right. And we're gonna be in the spirit of mercy these last days, just like the brother brought out Stephen. Let's read about the brother Joseph, man. And see what he did. Right? And see what his brothers did. Right? This is the book of um, Genesis chapter 37 and 27. It says, Come and let us sell him to the Ishmaelites, and let not our hand be upon him, for he is our brother in our flesh, and his brethren were content. Then they were passed by the Midianites merchantmen, and they drew and lift up Joseph out of the pit, and sold Joseph to the Ishmaelites for 20 pieces of silver, and they brought Joseph into Egypt. So, Joseph's brothers sold him into slavery just for being righteous, just for simply being righteous, just for simply having one dream that he can't even control. It's the most high that gave him that dream. All he did was declare it, and his brothers got mad at Joseph and sold him to the Ishmaelites, to the Arabs, right? Verse 29, and Reuben returned unto the pit. Behold, Joseph was not in the pit, and he rent his clothes, man. So let's see what happened down the line. After his brothers found out what happened to Joseph in Egypt. Let's see if Joseph got revenge. Let's see if he got revenge on his brothers. Now. All right. This is Genesis 42 and 1. Now, when Jacob saw that there was corn in Egypt, Jacob said unto his sons, why do you look one upon another? And he said, behold, I have heard that there is corn in Egypt. Get you down thither and buy it. For us from thence that we may live and not die. And Joseph's ten brethren went down to buy corn in Egypt. So Joseph's uh, brother, they went down to, uh, to buy corn in Egypt, not knowing Joseph was ruling the land at that time. So when Joseph seen his brothers in Egypt, let's see how he reacted. All right, it's the book of Genesis, chapter 45. Actually, Genesis, Genesis chapter yeah, 45 and verse 3. And Joseph said unto his brethren, I am Joseph. Do if my father yet live? And his brethren could not answer him for they were troubled at his presence. Imagine you, you sold your brother into slavery. And then 20 years later, you found out your brother is ruling Egypt. You found out your brother was ruling America. He was ruling a, a land, man. And you sold him into slavery. You didn't expect this outcome. But when you're dealing truthfully to the Most High, the Most High will exalt you no matter where you at. So guess what? And it says, And Joseph sends his brethren come near to me, I pray you. 
And they came near, he said, I am Joseph, your brother, whom we sold into Egypt. Now, therefore, be not grieved nor angry for yourselves that you sold me hither, for Yahweh did send me before you to preserve life. So he, been, he, he remained spiritual. He understood it wasn't his brothers that sold him to slavery. The Most High did it for a purpose to preserve life. The Most High did it just to see if he's going to remain humble. And he did, so the Lord exalted him. That was for, that's true forgiveness. Did the, Joseph could have got revenge. Joseph should have killed him. He could have put him in a dungeon. He could have tortured them. He could have fed everybody but his brothers to teach him a lesson, but he did it. Verse 6. For these two years, for these two years have the father been in the land, and there are uh, and there are five years in the which there shall neither be earring nor harvest. And Yahweh sent me before you to preserve you in posterity in the earth and to save your lives by a great del deliverance. So now it was not you that sent me hither, but Yahweh, and he had made me a father to Pharaoh, a lord of all his house, and a ruler throughout all the land of Egypt. So he understood the meaning behind him being placed in slavery, him going, being in a prison, and being lifted up in Pharaoh's house. He learned how to forgive his brother. You have to learn how to forgive if you're part of the elect. And we got to learn from our forefathers. We got to learn from these different accounts and these different events that happen in the scriptures. I mean, let's go to First Samuel. I mean, uh, yeah, First Samuel. All right. It's the book of First Samuel, chapter. Let me start at verse eighteen. Let me start at nineteen. It's First Samuel's. Uh, let me see what I want. It's First Samuel chapter 19. And I started verse 1. And it says, And Saul spake to Jonathan, his son, and to all his servants, that they should kill David. But Jonathan, Saul's son, delighted much in David. And Jonathan told David, saying, Saul, my father, seeketh to kill thee. Now therefore I pray thee, take heed to thyself until the morning, and abide in a secret place, and hide thyself. So Jonathan is telling David that my father is going to kill you. Right, and I will go out and stand before my father in the field where thou art. I will commune with my father of thee what I see that I will tell thee. And Jonathan spake good of David unto Saul his father, and said unto him, Let not the king sin against his servant, against David, because he hath not sinned against thee, and because his works have been to thee, uh, to thee ward very good. Uh, see, see, and he knew that David didn't do anything, all David was doing was being righteous, all King David was doing was just serving the most high. But then you got this man trying to kill him out of envy. So let's see what happens. All right, let's jump down to verse. Let's jump down to verse seven. And Jonathan called David and da Jonathan showed him all those things. And Jonathan brought David to Saul and he was in his presence as in times past. Now, David knows that this man's trying to kill him. Right now, he, now he's in now he's King Saul's presence. Now, what happened? Verse eight. And there was war again. And David went out and brought and fought with the Philistines and slew with a great slaughter and they fled from him and the evil spirit from the Lord was upon Saul as he sat in his house with his javelin in his hand and David played with his hand and Saul sought to smite David even to the wall with the javelin but he slipped out of the, uh, away out of Saul's presence and he smote the javelin to the wall and David fled and escaped the night so he tried to he still tried to kill David but as you read when the uh, chapters go on David didn't try to go out and try to kill Saul huh? David showed mercy to his brother many times man Right, David kept hiding himself from Saul, and David was uh, being merciful to his brother because he understood that that was the Most High's anointing. What you got? Oh, yeah, that's the spirit I was actually going to go into that. This is the book of First Samuel, chapter 24. <clears throat> this first Samuel, chapter 24, and verse number one. Now, like the brother brought out, <coughs> you had uh, Saul constantly trying to kill David. Now, this is 1 Samuel 24 and 1. This is the interaction that King David and King Saul had in 1 Samuel 24 chapter. It says, And it came to pass, when Saul was returned from following the Philistines, that it was told to him, saying, Behold, David is in the wilderness of Engedi. So Saul heard where, uh, where David's location was. Right? Saul got the low or the drop on King David. It says, Then Saul took 3,000 chosen men out of Israel 
and went to seek David and his men upon the rocks of the well goats. So now Saul is saying, all right, to hell with the Philistines. Where's, where's, where's David at? Right, to hell with my real enemies, the men that's trying to come against my people. Right, where's the man that I'm envying? And again, this is how you know Saul, Saul, Saul just had a hateful spirit on him. But David's spirit was so loving. We about to read what, uh, what David did and how he moved through the spirit. Verse three, and it came to pass. It's like, and he came to the sheep, to the sheep coats, by the way, where was a cave. And Saul went in to cover his feet, and David and his men remained in the side of the cave. So now you have King Saul, he's going in the cave, right? He's resting, not even knowing that David and his men are in the cave, right? In the cut, verse number four, and the men of David said unto him, Behold the day of which the Lord said unto thee, Behold, I will deliver thine enemy into thine hand, that thou mayest do to him, as it shall seem good unto thee. Then David arose and cut off the skirts of Saul's robe privately. So King David, he literally went up to Saul and cut the skirts of his garment off. Just showing, just showing uh, Saul how David could have easily killed him. But what happened? David had mercy. Imagine this man, he's been on your ass, just trying to kill you back day after day, day in and day out. Then you finally get the you finally get the opportunity to cut him out of the land and live and to protect yourself. And the only thing you do is just cut off a piece of his clothes to let him know that you really could have got him out of here. And again, that's the love and mercy that uh, that King David had on Saul. And not just Saul, but on the house of Saul in general. Right? Moses moved in that spirit. Let's go to the book of Exodus, the 32nd chapter. All right, this is the book of Exodus. Now, we read Exodus 32. You got the children of Israel. They made a golden calf. Right? Moses was in the mount. He had to come back down. Israel was going off. So this is the book of Exodus, chapter 32, and verse number 30. It says, And it came to pass on the morrow that Moses said unto the people, Ye have sinned a great sin, and now I will go up unto the Lord. For adventure I shall make an atonement for your sin. And Moses returned unto the Lord and said, Oh, this people have sinned a great sin, and have made them gods, of gold yet now if thou wilt forgive their sin and if not it's lucky and if not block me i pray thee out of the book which thou hast written so you have moses praying to the most high to forgive this people of their iniquity and if you don't forgive them then block me out the book of life right don't 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 allow me to get the kingdom just for israel to make it and then that's a very humbling that's 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 humbling on ways that's not even imaginable, right? That's real mercy for your people where they went off, right? You're in the you're in the right, right? Doing the work of the Lord, etc. The whole nation goes off, and you plead them before the Lord, asking the Most High, "Hey, just take me out of here, right? Save everybody else, just take me, and just have mercy on these people." That was the spirit of Moses, a humbling, meek, sincere, merciful spirit. And again, you had our forefathers, their, their humility and their spirit and their grace and their mercy was just a, on a whole nother level. All right. Right. Imagine a man saying, now, hey, man, I, I heard I heard your mom's going to give you a whooping for A, B and C. As a matter of fact, just come to my crib. Ah, and then you know what? I'll just take the whooping for you. Yeah, I know I told you don't do it. You still did it, but I'll take the whooping for you. No man, no, no man was, was, was doing that. But you have Moses, again, on a whole nother spiritual level to have that love and compassion and mercy upon his people. I would you got it. All right, it's Romans chapter 5. And I'll start at verse. All right, this is Romans chapter 5 and verse 6. Like the brother said, that, I mean, Moses took a lot of those things on his behalf. And another man named Yahweh Shah did the same thing as well. Ultimate mercy. Because we were supposed to be dead. Right, it's Romans chapter 5 and verse 6. For when we were yet without strength in due time, Hamashiach died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die, yet peradventure for a good man some would even dare to die. Yeah, even this man could be on fire. You know he's righteous. And, and, and Esau say, he either he dies or you die. You, not take, you may not take a bullet for that man. You know he on fire. Think about the Lord who died for those he knows that's going to go off again. He died for the people that you see smoking weed and, and, and uh, doing drugs outside your house right now. He died for those people too. They can come into this truth. 
You will barely die for a righteous man, but the Lord died for those that's ungodly. Verse 8, but Yahweh commendeth his love towards us, in that while we were yet sinners, Hamashiach died for us. Much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. Imagine seeing a man going off in front of you, smoking and lighting a blunt in front of you, and blow it in your face, and you still died for him. You say, I'm still going to I'm still going to die for you. You know he's not going to repent. You know he you know he is going to continue to do his wickedness. You he not he, ne he never heard a Bible verse. And he said I'm still going to die for this. That's ultimate mercy that we have to learn. The Lord is merciful. The most high is merciful. Let me go to the book of Psalms. This is Psalms chapter 37 and I'm going to start at verse 25. I've been young and now am old, yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken nor seed bragging bread. He is ever merciful and lendeth and the seed is blessed. The Most High is ever merciful. The Most High don't ever stop showing his mercy, man. I mean, you can count many times, brothers, it was supposed to have been out of here. Sisters supposed to have been out of here, man. But the Lord is very merciful. The Lord feeds you. He gets you up in the morning. His, his mercies are renewed day by day. He don't forsake you. He makes sure you good and your family good. The Lord is ever merciful. Let me go to the book of Sirach. All right. This is the book of Sirach. Chapter 5. And verse 6. I'm going to start at 5 and verse... Come. It's Sirach chapter 5. And I'm going to start at verse 5. Concerning propitiation, be not without fear to add sin unto sin, and say not his mercy is great, he will be pacified for the multitude of my sins. For mercy and wrath come from him, and his indignation resteth upon sinners. So be careful when you're dealing with the Lord, though. You don't want to take advantage of the Lord and his mercies and say, you know what, his mercy is great. I'm just going to do what I want to do. The Lord is going to surely come against you. He's surely going to make you understand who he really is, man. But the more side, the point is he's very merciful, and but his wrath also is with him as well. Let me go to the book of Jonah, chapter four, and verse two. And he prayed unto, the, and he prayed unto, uh, and he prayed unto the Lord and said, "I pray thee, O Yahweh, was not this my saying when I was yet in my own country? Therefore I fled before unto Tarshish, for I knew that thou art a gracious God and merciful, slow to anger and of great kindness and repentance thee of the evil." So those are the characteristics of the Lord. One of the characteristics of the Lord is very merciful, very loving. Slow to anger. See, the thing is, Jonah struggled with showing mercy. Jonah was a mighty prophet. Jonah got a whole city to repent. But Jonah didn't really show mercy to his brothers because he wanted his brothers to be to be destroyed, man. Right? This is Jonah chapter 4 and verse 10. Then said the Lord, Thou hast had pity on the gourd, for thou which has not labored, neither made it grow, which came up in the night and perished in the night. Yeah, the gourd that covered Jonah from the, 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 uh, the heat of the day. The most I took it away, and Jonah showed more mercy to that gourd than his own people. Verse 11 And should not I spare Nineveh, that great city, wherein are more than six score thousand persons that cannot discern between their right hand and their left hand, and also much cattle? So you say, You want me to destroy this whole city, but you got mad that I destroyed that gourd? You got to learn how to love your people and be merciful to your people. And that's just the point of the matter. Is this, In these last days, showing mercy can get you out of it can get, get your uh, sins covered a lot man you know the most side can cover a lot of sins just by you being merciful to your brothers and your sisters what you got uh, it's the book of uh, matthew chapter five <clears throat> you got on matthew five verse seven uh, uh, this book of matthew chapter five and verse seven it says blessed are the merciful for they shall obtain mercy so the lord said if you're merciful then you're gonna obtain mercy if you're not showing no mercy now, how do you expect the Lord to give you mercy in a day of trouble? Right? In a day of vengeance. Jacob's trouble. That's why it's good right now to stock up that spirit of mercy. Right? So in that day, you have uh, fruits before the Lord that you can bring forth. And the Lord can remember your good works. Let me read that again. Matthew 5 and 7. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. The Lord said that they will, they shall obtain mercy. He didn't say they might obtain mercy. Said fifty percent, right? Twenty five percent. No, the Lord said that they shall obtain mercy, and that and that should be a faith booster, and let you know how much mercy you should really be having on your people, right? So what a brother called you A, B, and C. All right, it's cool. Forget a brother. Go through the precept, etc. 
have mercy. Right? Don't 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 have that that damn tip for tat spirit. Or, okay, he did this to me. The next time he offend me, I'm gonna do this to him. No, the Lord says shoot forth mercy. David had, I mean, we, we already went into the precepts. David had mercy. Now you got um something called the sure mercies of David. Let's go to the book of Isaiah, chapter 16, and verse number five. Isaiah chapter 16 and verse 5. It says, And in mercy shall the throne be established, and he shall sit upon it in truth, and the judge slaughter, in truth, and the tabernacle of David, judging and seeking the judgment and hasting righteousness. Right, so King David's lineage literally is gonna go on forever, right? Coming back, you know what I'm saying, with uh, Shah being king, the righteous uh, ruler and king, the king of kings, all through what? David's mercy. Of course, through predestination and the prophecies as well. But one of those main reasons is because David had mercy. Therefore, the Lord allowed his kingdom to reign forever through a sea line. Well, let's go to the book of uh, Luke, where that's Luke 1 and 33. That might be what I want. Right, Luke chapter 1 and verse number 33. It says, I'm going to start at verse 30. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son and shall call his name Yahweh He shall be great and shall be called the son of the highest. And the Lord shall give unto him the throne of his father David. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there shall be no end. So the kingdom of David or the house of David, the tabernacle of David is going to have no end. Ultimately because the prophecies written of etc. But one main reason is because the Lord promised David to have his kingdom forever reigning. Because David had mercy. Again, you got something called the short mercy of David. Let's go to the book of 2 Samuel, right? Chapter 16 and verse number. I'm going to start a verse and get to the point. Verse number five. It says, and when King David came to Bahurun, behold, thence came out a man of the family of the house of Saul, whose name was Shemai, the son of Gura. He came forth and cursed still as he came. So you have this man from the house of Saul who came up to uh, to David and his men and was cursing David and shaking the hand at David. Now at this time, David, he's in the wilderness. He fled from Absalom, his son. He's catching hell. The last thing you want is for another man to meet you and your damn resting spot and start cursing you. Start railing on you for no reason. I mean, David, he already lost his son, right? This other son killed his son. The son that killed him came back is trying to take the kingdom. Not David has to flee. The own king has to flee into the wilderness from his own son, whom he brought back. So King David's mind is racing right now. And again, you have this man of the house of Saul. He's going literally in the wilderness to look for David just to scoff. Right now, let's see David's mindset. Verse 6. And he cast stones at David and at all his servants of the king of David. And all the people and all the mighty men were on his right hand and on his left hand. Now the same man is throwing stones at you. Right? He's throwing stones at you and your men. Verse 7. And thus said Shemai, when he cursed, come out, come out, thou bloody man. And thou man of Belial, the Lord hath returned upon thee all the blood of the house of Saul. And whose stead thou hast reigned. And the Lord have delivered the kingdom into the hand of Absalom, thy son. And behold, thou art taken in thy mischief because thou art a bloody man. So he's just going in on King David, right? Throwing stones at him, scoffing, cursing him. Verse 9, it says, Then said Abishai, the son of Zariah, unto the king, Why should this dead dog curse my lord the king? Let me go over, I pray thee. And take off his head, right? Do you guys? Do you got sons of Zariah that didn't play about King David? This man asked King David, "Hey, let me go over there and take off his head. Let me kill him." Why? Because again, you 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 go you read this in the spirit. 
You see how King David mindset was, the things that he's going through, the man that he's with. And King David never wrote no poems. Read 2 Samuel 23 and see the man that King David wrote with. So this man, he's stepping up on the behalf of King David and said, hey, let me go over there and kill him. Right, verse 9. It's like verse 10. And the king said, what have I to do with you, ye sons of Zariah? So let him curse, because the Lord hath said unto him, curse David. Who shall then say, wherefore thou hast done so? So King David had to check this man and say, well, okay, hold on, you don't got to do all that. The Lord put the spirit on this man to do so. So let him fulfill the will of the Lord. Right, verse 11. And David said unto Abishai and to all his servants, Behold, my son, which came forth out of my bowels, seeketh my life. How much more now may this Benjamite do it? It says, let him alone and let him curse, for the Lord hath bidden him. Right? And everything is of the will of the Mosiah. So King David told this man, uh, told, told this man Abishai, the son of Zariah, hey, let him do his own thing, because the Lord put on, on his spirit to do so. Right, my own son, he just took the kingdom back. I brought him back from the land. Now he's trying to overthrow me. The last thing I'm worried about is this Benjamite cursing. And again, King David was on a very high spiritual level to discern what the Lord was uh, was, was testing him and proving him. Right, let me get this quick precept as well. Let's go to the book of Slot. Let's go to the book of Psalms of the Three Holy Children. Or prayer of the right. Because again, the Lord, the Most High God, He moved in His spirit of mercy and compassion. All right, this is the book of the Songs of the Three Holy Children, verse number 67. It says, Oh, give thanks unto the Lord because He is gracious, for His mercy endureth forever. So the Lord is gracious and His mercy literally endures forever. Right, there's not a time or a place where the Lord's mercy will not be upon the earth, upon men, right upon Israel. Verse 68, it says, O all ye that worship Yahweh, bless the God of gods, praise him and give him thanks for his mercy endures forever. And the mercy of the Lord endures forever and ever and ever. How you got it? Come, let me get this closing precept. All right, it's the book of Matthew chapter 7, verse 12. And those are mighty points the brothers bringing out. You know, end all, be all. You got to be merciful unto your brothers so they can be merciful back unto you. And even if they don't, then you cast coals of fire upon their head and you let the Lord deal with them. It's Matthew 7 and 12. Therefore, all things whatsoever you would that men should do to you, do you even so to them? For this is the law and the prophets. And they say that in the world, the golden rule. They got that from the Bible. Do to others that you want done to yourself. Basically what it's saying. So if you want mercy from the Lord, if you want mercy from your brothers and sisters, you got to show mercy. I mean, it is what it is. Read it again. Therefore, all things whatsoever you would that men should do to you, do you even so to them, for this is the law and the prophets. We like to give our praises to Yahweh, Bashem, Mamashiach, Mamalaki, Yahweh, Shai, Lord willing, you was edified. You took good notes, you know, learn a little bit more about mercy, what it means to have mercy. And your Lord has mercy. So why? And you're not better than your Lord. So we should obtain and um, have mercy in these last days, especially. We like to give our praises to Yahweh, Bashem, Yahweh, Shai, Kitha. like to be a mighty strong. Shalom. Shalom.